not be totally sure that after the hearing you made the right move. Oh, y'all ain't. Y'all need some warm up? Is that what it is? <laughs> Should we sing another song because the, she has already begun? Amen. Genesis, the 32nd chapter. Amen. Reverend Carter read for our hearing, so we won't move all the way back through it all. But if we would look at verse 28, Genesis 32 and 28. Amen. You can stand, please. We'll just read this one scripture and pray and get right in. And he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled. Okay, okay. You have struggled with God. struggle. Yes. God's doing something with you and every time you turn around, somebody else got something to say. Something to do. You got an opinion about where you are, what you're doing. My boss is sitting me. You have struggled with God and with men. Yes. And you won. Thank you, Lord. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, Thank you, God. Yes, God. Father, we give you glory, praise, honor. Illuminate your word now. Yes, yes. Speak to your people. Let us hear. Act, let it activate something in us. Let it encourage our mind, body, and spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Amen. Go ahead and sit down. In our text, in our text, we're going to do it real quick. We are reminded that the road to blessing is a road of brokenness. Yes, yes, yes. A uh, road to blessing is a road of brokenness. Jacob begins his life full of himself. He's full of assurance that he would be successful because he was born into a promise. Yes, yes. And the Lord already promised through his father that he would indeed be blessed. So Jacob was full of himself. The Lord had promised him that he had a few things. So he was full of self-assurance. He was sure that he would be successful through his own means. But we find in our text that Jacob ended his life with a limp. Mm. All right, amen. All right. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm full of myself. Things are going good, but I had no idea that I would be broken by the end of this promise. Now, obviously, Jacob is living because God touched him, or the angel, which we know is God, touched him on his, on his side. But we've got to realize that God touches us through himself in various different means. We live in a broken world. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yeah. And this world is under the curse and condemnation of sin. And God uses life experience. The fact that we live in this world, he will use your boss to break you. He will use your job. He will use your significant other. He will use your bills. He will use life to break you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. He will use life to break you and shape you into the vessel that will consistently give him glory. Yes. And at the moment you begin to walk in self-assurance again because you got an education now and you feel like that's the reason why you got promoted, he will cause you to be laid off to break you again. Soon as you feel like it was your good looks that got you married, he will cause that person to cheat on you to break you again with your good looking self. Hold on. 36, 24, hey, hey, hey. 36. <laughs> come on, a couple pull a bottle, we'll be cheated on. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Hey, you and all your voluptuous system. Come on, somebody. <laughs> That one was for Yusef's dictionary. <laughs> That's for Yusef. 
believes in bringing a word to fit what he got to say. <laughs> transition. Boom. God, the God uses transition to nudge you, to push you, to get you in the place where he has already designed and predestined okay. you. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. I know I'm talking good because I can transition. Uh-huh. <laughs> if you are linked up to this word, whether you want to see or not, you are in transition. Transition will move you to a posture of prayer. Yes, yes it will. Because transition makes you need God. Yes. Yes. Y'all ain't saying yes. it. It makes you inquire of the Lord. Yes. Sometimes when, when you are in transition, you can't even articulate what it is that you need to say to God. you have. 
have for me, if this is so right, if I am really in right standing, if I am really in the place that I need to be, then why does this feel so wrong? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Try to help somebody today. Because yeah. yeah. we, we don't ask questions when we feel like our decisions have made us to a place of success. Yeah. 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 When God calls you to something, will lead you to something, and you immediately begin to see results and things are good, you don't ask no questions. Look at God. <laughs> oh, I heard you. Come on, somebody. But as soon as you hear and the decision that you made doesn't yield results instantly, you question. Did I hear you correctly? Is this really where you have me? I know I'm preaching with somebody. Yes, God. We begin to struggle within ourselves. Why? Because the church is guilty of not teaching us how to effectively deal with struggle. We will teach you how to shout and how to put a praise on your lips. We will shout you down. We will shout you into a frenzy. Come on, somebody. And then after you get finished shouting, we'll worship real good because God, the word, those who must worship God, do it in spirit and in truth. We have taught you how to worship. And when, when, when the finances get down, we teach you the importance of sowing the seed. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. 